So we're here now with Shaft at the Gamma School and I'd like you to tell a little bit about yourself and how did you get here? Where to begin? So my name is Shaft Udin. Um, I'm a self-love coach, a tantric practitioner and a transformation facilitator. Um, I'm the founder of sacredsexualawakening.com and my journey began on this island many, many moons ago. And yeah, it's been quite the journey. Tell me, uh, self-love coach, mm. what is self-love for you and what's so sacred about it? Mm. So I've spent pretty much enough money to buy another house in London on my own personal healing. Um, I discovered that shamans, tantric practitioners, yogis, basically anyone that's offering some kind of healing modality or movement practice or anything, they're providing the same medicine but in different packages and that's self-love. So that comes with being able to forgive yourself, accept yourself and love yourself. That's what it boils down to. And have you learned that now? It's forever unfolding in front of me. I had it, like I plateaued, I was like a famous tantric practitioner. I had a viral video, video about telling people about the power of tantra and, and I was busy and then I had a bit of a physical and mental breakdown, like my body stopped working which meant I couldn't live my purpose which is tantra. I couldn't dance, I couldn't make love and that was like, oh, who am I? And then I spiralled and spiralled and the pain wouldn't leave and then and I came back on this island and, and everything changed. Wow. So, and you came, came here to Agama? I did. Many moons ago, I did a Tantra Rituals course. And, um, and yeah, it was really powerful. Um, I learned, it was very different from the previous Tantric uh, experiences that I've had and the courses I've done. is very um, theoretical and focused on um, yeah, rituals. Uh, and, I, and my main passion now is rituals and creating a sacred space and a safe place for um, one person or two people, groups of people to go deep into themselves on a shamanic journey. So are you telling you using these rituals that you learned here at the Gamma in your own um, practices with, with your students? Life is like a buffet. You take what you want She's just going to make sure you have a massive plate so you can have everything. So right. I take everything from everything. Like nothing is original. Um, everything is inspired by something else. And it's always nice to add your own element. There is no wrong or right way to do Tantra, just your way. So choose whatever feels right for you. And I like to have the most fun possible. And how would you evaluate the, the quality of the teachings that you got here so far? Um, I mean, I'm doing the month-long yoga level one now, and uh, I'm not a yogi. I, I fa in fact, it was the Tantra course that said you could open up more of your chakra and your, your energy centers by making love in your Anahata or your Vishuddha, like concentrating on that area. And if you do that for 10 minutes, it's like doing an asana for one hour or two hours. So I chose that path. <laughs> so I've been doing that. And Tantra was, that was it for me. Um, but then my body broke down and I couldn't move and um, I needed like to build my body up from the foundation. So, so now I'm doing something I really don't enjoy doing, which is yoga. Mm, tell me, how's it going for you, the level one? Challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I believe that your lifestyle dictates um, what you look like, like physically. So my lifestyle was one that Krishna embodies. If you want to reach enlightenment, you've got to do three things. You can do all the million things you want, but as long as you have these three basic things, you will reach enlightenment. And he said, singing devotional songs, dancing mm. and making love. That's it. And that's all I did to get these. <laughs> that's a Yoga nice wasn't fact. one of the options. <laughs> But now you're in yoga. I am in yoga. Yeah. What is challenging for you in, in this yoga course? Um, I describe it as up, down, up, down, sleep. Um, for me, it's the, yeah, the boredom. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, I'm getting into the asanas. I'm doing all the things. Like, I'm a, I'm a dancer. I'm a mover. I'm, I'm, I used to be a professional break dancer, so embodiment is my thing. Um, I'm just used to doing more fun stuff. Mm. I mean, I, and I get paid to meditate. Like, that's my job. But I, I, for some reason, I'm just finding it a bit more challenging. I'm waiting for the eureka moment that everyone keeps on talking about. I've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days left on my month course for this eureka moment to happen. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thanks. Uh, but tell me a little bit about the, the community here. Have you met some beautiful, interesting people? How, made um, some friends? Well... My family, uh, my whole community is on this island. Um, like I, I call it Tantra Town. This is what I know this place as, is Tantra Town. Um, and all of my family is here. I'm actually very shy and introverted. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually working on trying to be not that. So when I'm in a new environment, I find it really hard to interact with people. So for the last month, I've just been keeping myself to myself. Mm. Hiding I'm, somewhere in a corner? Just running off to give you any massages, yeah. <laughs> Have anyone tried to approach you and make friends with you? Y yeah, I've got one friend. Um, his name's Joe. You get on. He's English. Yeah, Joe is nice. Yeah, Joe's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a, a, a fellow internet sensation, Maxine Bjork, who's, a, who's one of my tantra riders. Um, she's on the course, but I'm too shy to talk to her. I'm just very shy. To people that I don't really know. What's wrong with you? I'm a human being now. What <laughs> happened to you? Why are you so shy? Because I had a mental physical breakdown. I'm trying to fix my body and my confidence. So how is it going with that? Really well. Uh, this island gave me I think, everything I needed. Like I became so shut down. So like my body was just going like this and I couldn't move. And that resulted in not being able to express myself, express my desires. Like I'm famous for being advice tantric sex guru google it and yeah then all of my powers and all of my strength and all of my magic was taken away from me and and it was the the shaktis on this island that healed me love healed me sex healed me fasting for two days i was really fat by the way mm -hmm. um, i was actually fat from being so sad i was like just feeding my face Sugar. In, in London, just like, I'm really sad, I don't care, I can't move my body, can't dance, can't have sex, I'll, I should go down the gym, should work out, now I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat, I should be doing, no, I'm going to just keep on eating to fill the void. You sound just, like a just, teenage girl right now, you know that? <laughs> well, I, I, I was in a very bad place. Oh. It turns out it's something called the dark night of a soul, but I'm on the other side of that now. So you're out? I'm definitely out. This island helped me. My shaktis, my lovers. Sexual energy is so important. Like, as soon as that was sparked inside me again, like, everything opened up. And I was like, what was I doing for six months? Did you get any sex in London for six months? Um, I had a girlfriend, uh, a lover. Um, we've been together for a long, long time. And I was too scared to ask for help. Like, I was that ill. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Um... It was, yeah, I couldn't even, in the end, I couldn't even look at her in the eye. The how eyes. many, how many girls, girlfriends do you have now? Uh, I've got to look at my phone, just to, I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, my, my lover, she's in California, she's an inspiring, powerful pr priestess, um, but at the moment, um, I just have, my Shakti's that are my mothers and therapists, they just look after me. Is They're it? all trained practitioners. I'm like, I'm, I'm blessed to work and live and love like very powerful women. Mm. Like these are world class facilitators. That and how do you deal women. with uh, very powerful women? Doesn't it make you feel like a boy who is looking for some uh, love from mummy? Did you not hear that I want a mother and a therapist? That's, that's what perfect. I hear. So are you okay with that? Are they okay with that? They channel the. Treating, we, treating we, you like a kid? We are trained space holders. We are trained to embody the Divine Father, the Divine Mother, Kali, Shiva, Krishna, who, whatever deity, whatever um, archetype you're on a channel, we are trained in that. I work with women with sexual trauma every day. I work with women with, who have suffered horrific rape. I have su I've worked with a lot of yeah emotions coming at me with my with my work so 
I need that little boy inside of me to be nourished. And as I am a trained practitioner, I can ask for that from another trained practitioner. For when, I can't be Shiva every day. Like, I was, until my body broke. And then I realised, I actually do need, I need to ask for help. So, I have my, my friends and lovers, and, and they, I, I, they just literally hold me like a little baby and look after me and feed me. It's great. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because I'm, I'm trained, they're trained, so we just, we can meet each other and actually express our desires. So you kind of swap the, this, uh, your skills or how do you do that? Or you just... Um... So my mantra this year is, I am a sacred sexual Jedi. Oh. So I'm training to be a Jedi. I'm building my body now from the foundation up. I'm, le I'm learning the Kama Sutra. I'm learning, like, I have, like, a lot of money's worth of embodied practice in this body. Like, I have trained with the top tantricas on the planet. And I've got some skills. And I've got powerful Shaktis on this island who are certified and trained priestesses in bikinis. And they got a lot of skills. And when we get together, it's like going, it's, it's like being sex ninjas. It's amazing. So tell me a little bit more about sacred sex. Mm. If you're, as a sacred sex Jedi, you are the best person to, to really describe this topic. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, it's my passion. Like I said, I, I've been in one pendulum. I was frigid, um, really contracted and shy and couldn't speak to girls. And then I went to the other side and became this, you know, sacred sexual Jedi and still embodying that. But my business is sacredsexualawakening.com. And, um, and now I'm, you know, learning to be a human being. So... When it comes to, when I have sex with someone, my definition of sex is completely different to every, like if I say, yeah, I just had sex with a girl, every single human being will have a different definition of what that means. From the people from the normal world, uh, they will have boom, 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 boom. Their inspiration is Pornhub. Um, to the tantric people where we no longer use the four basic moves, <laughs> which is, you know, man on top, woman on top, doggy style and if you go a little bit wild you have reverse cowgirl like we've got all these other yogic practices all these other amazing moves where you could hit the g-spots from another angle you could hit the, the a spot from another angle like it's you could there's so much to sex once you let go of living in yeah in the normal world and once you go into the sacred practice of tantra this involves boundaries my biggest work I do is around boundaries and consent when I work with someone we do the, the rules of engagement which is we always sit down and talk about our intentions, our fears our desires, our boundaries do you have any STI sexually transmitted infections and um, what will this mean to you um, and then when you're making love we've got to do a meditation uh, I don't ejaculate, I injaculate so we have to, yeah, do a meditation even even before making love. I've turned sex into worship, basically. I could reach the oneness, nirvana, through lovemaking. Like, the void, the emptiness. It, you, there is no me and the other person or group of people. It is literally just one, one flow, one movement, and it is pretty amazing. So... Tell me, what is what makes the sex sacred? I mean, if you use different poses and uh, call it meditation, what else is there? It's like a prayer. You guys do consecration every day. I consecrate every day as well and consecrate before making love, so all the energy gets taken up to the collective consciousness to help raise the vibration on the planet. We call in Shiva Shakti. Um, my speciality is sex magic. So um, my background is advertising. So I basically work with ROIs, return on investments. I want to see what works and what doesn't. And if something works, I will see the results and keep on doing it. So I learned about sex magic, pretty much the first thing I did when I got into Tantra. And 
I work less and have more in my life. I live a life beyond my dreams. I live a life of abundance, which is amazing. Because I've learned certain, I call it spiritual life hacks. And that's just using your sexual energy by yourself or with a partner or it's more powerful with a group of people. And actually Agama even said that. <laughs> Coming back to Agama, do you, do you feel any changes after having four weeks, pretty much four weeks of, of, of yoga? I know they're very, very strict to, to the I had program. a lot of changes when I did my tantric, uh, tantric rituals. Like, that was really amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, that was amazing. This, I could almost touch my toes. Good for you. Thanks. Um, I can. I have a very clean tongue. That's good. Of the good. morning kriyas. Um, my gums don't bleed anymore because I rub salt Show in it. Show me your tongue. I've just eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's about it. <laughs> that's it. Well, I I also learned something. I'm all about not believing in anything which means I believe in everything. So, we as humans, if we believe in something, it will come true. If you believe in Christianity, that would be real for you. If you believe in the law of attraction, uh, that will come true for you. If you believe that everything is terrible and your life sucks, that will come true as well. Definitely. <laughs> so, what I found out, everything is based on a belief system. So, I know I need to do some kind of movement meditation practice. So, I chose Tantra. That works for me. Um, but I also know that if I want to get stronger, fitter, more, to be able to hold women during my sessions, I need some kind of movement meditation practice where I stretch a bit more as well. So I'm just going to make up my own stuff and take the best asanas that I've learned and just make up my own stuff. But don't you think if something is good for you, it, it's not always uh, good for the others? I mean, everyone is Everyone's quite different, unique. Yeah. Oh, everything I do is made up for Shaft Udin. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to suffer from addiction, loneliness, depression, all of the modern day illnesses that everyone in a major city suffers from. I don't have them anymore. Like, I'm addiction free. No addictions? None. I do get addicted to this, which is uh, scrolling, when I go back Facebook. to London. Yeah, when I go back to London because I'm waiting for my tube or something. I don't uh -huh. cycle anymore because it's cold and wet. <laughs> so... I accept the fact that I will do this on the train just to kill some time. I also meditate on the train, but then I'll go back to this because I've got so much admin to do. Do you do this? Yes, I do. I call it the galactic orgasmic meditation. Ah. You don't ejaculate, you use that energy to revitalize yourself in the morning. So it's, um, yeah, it's my penis practice. It's, my, it's, my, it's how I get all my sexual energy to love myself. So, yeah. Are you addicted to sexual energy? Um, no. It's like saying, are you addicted to uh, joy? Mm -hmm. Addicted to fun? Do you like dancing? Are you addicted to that? I do love dancing. Are you addicted to it? Not really, but sometimes I Has it destroyed I your life? It. Has it destroyed your life? No, not at then all. Then it's not an addiction. Why not? I Sex is not destroying people's lives. Not always, but it's still addiction. Yeah, but I've agree? been an addict. I, I can't get life insurance because of my medical records. Like, I've died so many times, it's ridiculous. <laughs> really? I was a badass addict. I was like a really functional, amazing... I was like one of the most hedonistic people on the planet. Like, my old boss, um, he basically said, Shaft, you're way more better when you're shit-faced. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm kind of not drinking anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, what was your addiction? Um, Lambrini and ketamine. <laughs> Whoa, that's serious stuff. So, well, hey, there's TED Talks about ketamine, and it cures, it cures a lot it of... It um, cures? It cures depression. It's a wonder drug. But when misused, it is, you know, like all medicines misused or any drugs misused, it will cause death, and I've almost died. <laughs> How did you get out? Um, hospitals? Sexual energy actually really helps. So here's a story. So I went on a 48-hour bender, uh, cocaine and cheap wine, and um, 
I basically had these really bad pains in my in, in my here, and I was like, and I just had a new girlfriend, and I didn't want to tell her how much pain I was suffering. And we we're watching The Apprentice. This was a long time ago, and I was like, guys, I think I'm really ill. Ooh. And they're like, um, you are fine, shaft. It's fine. Just go to sleep. I was like, okay. And every time I put a foot down, it really hurt. Like the vibrations would just hurt my kidneys. I'm like. And then, obviously, new girlfriend, night together, we're going to have sex. So we had sex, and I felt amazing. I was like, I feel totally fine. And then I started walking to, you know, this tube station to go to work the next day. And then the pain was so horrific that I had to go to the A&E. Um, we had sex in the morning as well, so it was, like, it gave me enough energy to get to the tube station, to get to the A&E. And then they found out that... Uh, my kidneys were so damaged that I was almost on the dialysis machine. I was pissing blood. Um, it was really bad. This was just one of many incidents I've had where sexual energy has given me enough energy to go to the hospital. And now I know how powerful sexual energy is. Because I was fat a month and a half ago. <laughs> and depressed and sad. Because of my second awakening where my body broke down. Now you should just say that yoga saved your life and it will be rich Take and Take a sexual awakening.com, it'll save your life. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Check out my online course, take a sexual awakening.com forward slash online. <laughs> How old are you? I'm really old. Really old? Yeah. You look very young. It's because I do tantra. Oh, that's good. That's, that's the only reason why. I never used to look like this when I was a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um, and the only reason why I got into this was because of very attractive women who I thought were in their mid-30s, but they were in their 50s and 60s. I was like, wow, what are you guys doing? Your vaginas are really tight. Uh, and they said Tantra. And I was like, what's Tantra? I had no idea what Tantra was back then. And then I was like, I want what you're having. And it's the women that have shaped who I am and made me more of a man than I could ever imagine. So you have a tight vagina now? Very, very tight vagina. All vaginas are welcome. All vaginas are sacred. Yonis. <laughs> sacred space. <laughs> What's your relationship with men? Ha, huh, that's an interesting question.